office or somehow were responsible for his election because of what they did in 2016. And that sets him off. So we've seen time and time again that people sort of avoid the topic. So it's quite possible that the president learned about this operation to get inside the Russian Good girl. From your reporting. We think that possible. He issued two tweets the night that it came out on Saturday night. The first suggested that publishing it was perhaps an act of treason. He called you a traitor, basically. Yes. And then in the second tweet, he said, and it's all wrong. If the treason charge seems worth asking you about, did the people you talked to inside the U.S. military, the Cyber Command, the Intelligence Committee, did they discourage you from reporting on this? They didn't. They refused to comment on the specifics that we had found about the U.S. operation. But, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, and we're accustomed to going to the government and saying, here are the facts we're going to lay out. And if you have any national security objections to our publishing this, let us know now before we print, and we'll make some judgments about whether to hold back some details. And over the years, I have held back details, including about some American cyber operations when the government made the case that the adversary didn't know about it. But in this case, they came back and said, we have no national security objections. In fact, it may be that people in the Trump administration, perhaps not the president himself, but those around him may have wanted you to report this. Or certainly they didn't see a downside to it. You know, there's this great scene at the end of Dr. Strangelove when they've been building this huge nuclear gadget, and they're keeping it a deep secret. And the whole premise of the end of the movie is, if you don't tell them about the gadget, what good is it? Right? So we have sort of the same problem in cyber. David, from everything you've explained, the U.S. goal here is deterrence. And it reluctantly entered a more aggressive phase in its approach to cyber with the goal of preventing our adversaries from attacking us. At what point does a strategy of deterrence inevitably lead to an arms race where you have to keep up with your enemies and their approach to cyber? And on and on it goes until eventually we're in a deeper phase of cyber conflict. Michael, we're deeply into that arms race already. We're building up new weapons. Everybody else is building up new weapons. But there's a lot of discussion these days about whether you should have something akin to a digital Geneva Convention. You know, the old, the real Geneva Conventions protect civilians from being gassed, tortured, or starved. In the digital Geneva Convention, you might say, there are some systems that are so critical to civilian life that we have to protect them. Power grids, because they power hospitals and nursing homes. You might say that election systems should be off limits. You might say that emergency communication systems, communications to ambulances or the police or the fire department are off limits. And these all seem like pretty attractive ideas. And a lot of countries have signed on to them, although not the United States so far. And one reason, I think, is that many in the U.S., inside the government, believe we have a big advantage. And that we don't want to give that advantage up and deprive a future president of the United States of the ability to use one of these weapons that we've spent billions of dollars developing. They might want to be able to go to a president and say, you know, it would be better to manipulate the results in this election than end up with another Nicolas Maduro, the dictator in Venezuela. Or it might be better to be able to go into the central bank of this country and drain a dictator's bank account or keep a terrorist organization from being able to spend any money. So if we're going to be able to do those things, we probably wouldn't want to sign up to an agreement that prohibits them. And that's the big argument we need to have. Come on. Go, go. What cyber capability are we willing to give up in order to begin to set some norms of behavior that we're hoping other countries will adhere to as well? David, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. On Monday afternoon, a spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russia was confident it could repel U.S. attempts to hack into its electrical system. Warned that such attacks could eventually...
eventually escalate into a silent war with the U.S. Investing simple, along with great value. They provide the tools and support you need to navigate the markets, all to help your money work hard for you. For more information, visit eTrade.com slash the daily. eTrade Securities LLC. Remember SIPC. Here's what else you need to know today. On Monday, the Chinese government expressed strong support for Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam. After days of massive protests against her by hundreds of thousands of Hong Kong residents, the support from China could ultimately backfire by reinforcing protesters' fears that Lam is acting on China's behalf. The protests began after Lam pushed for a law that would allow Hong Kong residents to be prosecuted in China, a plan she has since suspended in response to the protests. Iran yeah. has announced that it plans to violate one of the central terms of the 2015 deal to limit its nuclear by increasing its stockpile of enriched uranium beyond what the agreement permits. If Iran follows through with the plan, it would have enough fuel to produce a nuclear bomb in less than a year. The threat appears designed to pressure European countries who remain in the nuclear deal to offer Iran assistance that will offset the economic damage caused by the Trump administration, which imposed sanctions on Iran after withdrawing from the deal last year. That's it for the daily. I'm Michael Bell. See you tomorrow. If it doesn't fulfill its constitutional responsibility to bring the president to justice. Patients from the immigrants living in the interior of the country, not those recently crossing the border, has gone down because they just don't have the space. So this came as a shock last night to a lot of those officials. Yes, they have some for some more what they call targeted enforcement actions, what we would call deportation raids. But it wasn't anything on the scale, and it's certainly not anything that they're ready for on a logistical level when it comes to money or space. Stephen, give us a history lesson, Julia. Acting ICE Director Juan Yellow and former DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. The two of them got food back in April, specifically because they pushed back against this plan. They had concerns about logistics, legality, and really about public backlash, they had to live through the public response to the zero tolerance policy, and they said, no way. What has changed? Have those concerns disappeared? That's right. Well, no, the concerns from the people who are having to carry this out has not disappeared, but it is... ...progression of growth and change. 16, that was just two years ago, but... If we dug into every old post or private message of every student in America, is there a risk that we could take this too far? Some people out there are saying they're kids, kids are kids, but that is when you accept someone into college when they're a teenager. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's a risk, but there's also a responsibility. Uh, people need to know who people are who are at their core. You know, Harvard or any other institution is not asking everyone to think the same. They want people to have a diverse set of opinions, but they want people to walk onto that campus with a shared sense of humanity, with a shared sense of understanding. Uh, and and that's, that's that bar that was not hit. Uh, you know, I, I think about it when I first went to, went to Johns Hopkins. And 
as a kid from Baltimore, making it to Hopkins was was amazing because that was a school that we didn't think we belonged at. We thought that was for the rich kids and for the kids from out of town. And then here I was now walking on to Hopkins campus feeling like, wow, this is a place that wants me and I belong and the people want me here. And then I remember during our orientation, one of the first things that they did was they advised us about which neighborhoods not to go into in Baltimore to include the ones that I grew up in. And immediately this place that I thought was, was in this, this was years ago, but the place that I thought was now welcoming me, sharing, understanding and seeing my humanity. One of the first experiences that I had there was reminding me of something different. But do you think they were doing that as an act of exclusivity? Bounce a lot. It's ride time. I think they were doing it in their perspective from a, from a place of protection. But I think the thing that we also want to remember is the, the protection that goes well past the physical protection. That we want all of our students to feel like they are a place that is welcoming, that a place that is, that is, that is, that it understands. Oh, yummy. Schedule a reminder in one hour to find out whether LWD's technology can determine lifetime value of customer and follow them around as we had envisioned and compare to our list of requirements. Here's your reminder. How's Bounce a lot? Swarmy. She grew another pound in four days. She eats a lot. When are you gonna have to put her in her sack? Mm -hmm. She can escape the sack. She's squirmy. Oh my God. I love her so much. She can jump on my bed now. Yeah, she jumps off the back of the couch. <laughs> She's got her tongue sticking out. I hope Chloe's okay. I'm glad she told us. No. So you ready for the Amazon Prime Day telethon? No. They don't. They haven't announced it yet. I just don't know what to do for it. I mean, you know, if if we're really going to be the featured one on on there, um, and they're going to get eyeballs for us, we'd be crazy not to get do like an all day affair. Yeah. No, I, I mean, like having different people and the only issue is how much inventory do you send there or is seller fulfilled going to be you know because um, stocking up for prime day in the past i would not send very much and i'll make sure we're well stocked but i'm not going to overload it because i'm just paying the brand all back Look at her. <laughs> Susie prefers when it's daddy cam to Susie cam. She can roll on her back without. <laughs> She's getting fast. Really? Look at her. Your legs are too short. Mm -hmm. 
won't be for long. Let's see what Chloe's doing. Hopefully she's not mad at us. If she did, she would have gotten us. She's sitting back there snoozing, I'll bet. I think we should take her a little bit around here now. Look how pretty that car is.